and see if anyone joins us tonight. Hi guys. <clears throat> See if anyone joins us. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you guys? It's good to see you guys on here tonight. All right. Well, we've got a few on here, so welcome. How is everyone? It's so good to see you guys for another week of Bedtime Stories with Miss Emily. I'm Miss Emily from the Meigs County Library. And this week, our winner of our poll was Super Fudge by Judy Bloom. So the choices were Super Fudge and <laughs> I'm going to forget the other choice, aren't I? knew I would forget it but this is the one that won I think it only won by one vote I believe so so you guys might find this one familiar because we read a book back in April probably about the middle of April called Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom and this picks up if you remember Peter and Fudge Peter was the older brother, and Fudge was the little brother who got into all kinds of trouble. Mm -hmm. So this kind of picks up where that left off. So I believe Peter was in fourth grade then, the Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing. And then this year, he's kind of in the middle of his fifth grade year. So I'll read you guys a little bit of the back cover, and then we'll get started for tonight, okay? So here we go. Um, sometimes life in the Hatcher household is enough to make a 12 to make 12 year old Peter think about running away his worst problem is still his younger brother fudge who hasn't changed a bit since his crazy capers in tales of a fourth grade nothing if you ask Peter fudge is just an older and bigger pain then Peter learns that his mom is going to have a baby and the whole family is moving to Princeton for a year it will be bad enough starting sixth grade in a strange place and going to the same school as Fudge. But Peter can imagine something even worse. How will he ever survive if his new baby, if the new baby is a carbon copy of Fudge? Carbon copy means just the same. So what will he do if his new, if the new baby in the family is just as um, ornery and mischief as fudge. So here we go. This is Super Fudge by Judy Bloom, and we'll get started. We're gonna read the first two chapters tonight. So chapter one. Oh, and this is read, sorry, before I forget, with permission from um, Yearling Books, and they are part of Random House Books. So we wanna thank them very much for letting us read this. All right, guys, here we go. Guess what, Peter, chapter one. Life was going along okay when my mother and father dropped the news. Bam! Just like that. We have something wonderful to tell you, Peter, Mother said before dinner. She was slicing carrots into the salad bowl. I grabbed one. What is it? I asked. I figured maybe my father had been made president of the company, or maybe a teacher phoned saying that even though I don't get the best grades in the fifth grade, I am definitely the smartest kid in the class. We're going to have a baby, Mom said. We're going to what? I asked, starting to choke. Dad had to whack me on the back. Tiny pieces of chewed up carrot flew out of my mouth and hit the counter. Mom wiped them up with a sponge. Have a baby, Dad said. You mean you're pregnant? I asked Mom. That's right, she told me, patting her middle. Almost four months. Four months? You've known about this for, month, for four months and you didn't tell me? We wanted to be sure, Dad said. It took you four months to be sure? I saw the doctor for the second time today, Mom said. The baby is due in February. She reached over and tried to tousle my hair. I ducked and got out of the way before she could touch me. Dad took the lid off the pot on the stove and stirred up the stew. Mom went back to slicing carrots. You'd have thought we were discussing the weather. How could you? I shouted. How could you? Isn't one enough? 
They both stopped and looked at me. I kept right on shouting, Another fudge? Just what the family needs! I turned and stormed down the hall. Fudge, my four-year-old brother, was in the living room. He was shoving crackers into his mouth and laughing like a loon at Sesame Street on TV. I looked at him and thought about having to go through it all over again. The kicking and the screaming and the messes and more, much more. I felt so angry that I kicked the wall. Fudge turned. Hi, Peta, he said. You are the biggest pain ever invented, I yelled. He tossed a handful of crackers at me. I raced to my room and slammed the door. So hard, the map of the world fell off my wall and landed on the bed. My dog Turtle barked. I opened the door just enough to let him squeeze through and then slammed it shut again. I pulled my Adidas bag out of my closet and emptied two dresser drawers into it. Another fudge, I said to myself. They're going to have another fudge. There was a knock at the door and my dad called. Peter, go away, I told him. I'd like to talk to you, he said. About what? As if I didn't know. The baby. What baby? You know what baby. We don't need another baby. Need it or not, it's coming, Dad said. So you might as well get used to the idea. Never. We'll talk about it later, Dad said. In the meantime, scrub up. It's time for dinner. I'm not hungry. I zipped up my bag, grabbed a jacket, and opened my bedroom door. No one was there. I marched down the hall and found my parents in the kitchen. I'm leaving, I announced. I'm not going to hang around and wait for another fudge to get born. Goodbye. I didn't move. I just stood there, waiting to see what they'd do next. Where are you going? Mom asked. She took four plates out of the cabinet and handed them to Dad. To Jimmy Fargo's, I said. Although, until that moment, I hadn't thought about where I would go. They have a one-bedroom apartment, Mom said. You'd be very crowded. Then I'll go to Grandma's. She'll be happy to have me. Grandma's in Boston for the week, visiting Aunt Linda. Oh, so why don't you scrub up and have your dinner, and then you can decide where to go, Mom said. <clears throat> I didn't want to admit that I was hungry, but I was. And all those good smells coming from the pots and pans on the stove were making my mouth water. So I dropped my Adidas bag and went down the hall to the bathroom. Fudge was at the sink. He stood on his stool, lathering his hands in three inches of suds. Hello, you must be Bert, he said in his Sesame Street voice. My name is Ernie. Glad to meet you. He offered me one of his sudsy little hands. Roll up your sleeves, I told him. You're making a mess. Mess, mess. I love to make mess, he sang. We know, we know, I told him. I ran my hands under the faucet and dried them on my jeans. When we got to the table, Fudge arranged himself in his chair. Since he refused to sit in his booster seat, he had to kneel so that he could reach his plate at the table. Peta didn't scrub, he said. He only rinsed. You little, I started to say, but Fudge was already yapping away to my father. Hello, I'm Bert. You must be Ernie. That's right, my father said, playing along with him. How are you, Bert? Well, I tell you, Fudge said, my liver's turning green and my toenails are falling off. Sorry to hear that, Bert, my father said. Maybe tomorrow will be a better day. Yes, maybe, Fudge said. I shook my head and piled some mashed potatoes on my plate. Then I drowned them in gravy. Remember when we took Fudge to hamburger heaven, I said, and he smeared mashed potatoes all over the wall? I did that, Fudge said, suddenly interested. Yes, I told him. You, and you dumped a plate full of peas on your head, too. My mother started to laugh. I forgot all about that day. Too bad you didn't remember before you decided to have another baby. Baby? Fudge asked. My mother and father looked at each other. I got the message. They hadn't told Fudge the good news yet. Yes, Mom said. We're going to have a baby. Tomorrow? Fudge asked. No, not tomorrow, Mom said. When? Fudge asked. February, Dad said. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, Fudge recited. Okay, okay, I said, we all know how smart you are. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Enough, I said. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, R, B, Y, C, 
Will somebody turn him off? I said. Fudge was quiet for a few minutes. Then he said, What kind of new baby will it be? Let's hope it's not like you, I said. Why not? I was a good baby, wasn't I, Mommy? You were an interesting baby, Fudgy, Mom said. See, I was an interesting baby, he said to me. And Peter was a sweet baby, Mom said. He was very quiet. Lucky you had me first, I said to Mom, or you might not have had any more kids. Was I a quiet baby too? Fudge asked. I wouldn't say that, Dad said. I want to see the baby, Fudge said. You will. Now! You can't see it now, Dad said. Why not? Fudge asked. Because it's inside me, Mom told him. Here it comes, I thought. The big question. When I asked it, I got the book called How Babies Are Made. I wondered what Mom and Dad would say to Fudge, but Fudge didn't ask. Instead, he banged his spoon against his plate and howled, I want to see the baby. I want to see the baby now. You'll have to wait until February, Dad said, just like the rest of us. Now, 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 Fudge screamed. Another five minutes of this, I thought. Maybe even more. And who's to say that they aren't going to keep having babies, one after another? Excuse me, I said. I got up from the table. I went to the kitchen, and I grabbed my Adidas bag. Then I stood in the doorway and called. Well, I'd better be on my way. I sort of waved goodbye. Where is PETA going? Fudge asked. I'm running away, I told him. But I'll come back to visit someday. No, PETA, don't go. Fudge jumped off his chair and ran to me. He grabbed my leg and started bawling. PETA, PETA, take me with you. I tried to shake him off my leg, but I couldn't. He can really be strong. I looked at my mother and father, and then I looked down at Fudge, who gave me the same look as Turtle when he was begging for a biscuit. If only I knew for sure that the baby, what the baby would be like. I said, take a chance, Peter, Dad said. The baby won't necessarily be anything like Fudge, but it won't necessarily not be like him either. Fudge tugged on my leg. I want an interesting baby, he said, like me. I sighed. If you think it's going to sleep in my room, you're crazy. <laughs> I told Mom and Dad. The baby will sleep in here, Mom said, in the dining area. Then where will we eat? Oh, we'll think of something, Mom said. I put my Adidas bag down and tried shaking Fudge off one more time. Okay, I said. I'll stay for now, but when the baby comes... If I don't like it, I'm leaving. Me too, Fudge said. Sam got a new baby and it smells. He held up his nose. Pee you. Who wants dessert? Dad asked. It's vanilla pudding. I do. I do. Fudge yelled. He let go of me and climbed into his chair. Peter? Dad asked. Sure. Why not? And I sat down at the table too. Mom reached over and tousled my, tousled my hair. This time, I let her. Chapter 2. This is called Coochie Coochie Coo. Before the end of the week, Fudge asked the big question. How did the baby get inside you, Mommy? So Mom borrowed my copy of How Babies Are Made, and she read it to Fudge. As soon as he had the facts straight, he was telling anybody and everybody exactly how Mom and Dad had made the baby. He told Henry, our elevator operator. Henry smiled and said, That's a mouthful for a small fry like you. He told the checker at the supermarket. His eyes got bigger and bigger until Mom said, That's enough, Fudge. But I'm just getting to the good part, Fudge said. Peter, Mom said, It's getting very warm in here. Why don't you take Fudge outside? He saw a pregnant woman on the bus and said, I know what's growing inside you, and I know how it got there, too. The woman got up and changed her seat. He told Grandma. She said to my mother, Annie, don't you think, do you think it's wise for him to know so much? In my day, we talked about the stork. What's a stork? Fudge asked. It's like a big bird, I told him. Like Big Bird on Sesame Street? Not exactly. I like birds, Fudge said. I want to be one when I grow up. You can't be a bird, Grandma said. Why not? Because you're a boy. So what? 
Fudge said. They laughed like crazy and turned somersaults on the floor. Fudge had never stopped talking about his Fudge never stopped talking about his favorite subject. He told the nursery school class, and his teacher was so impressed she phoned and asked Mom to come to school. The children had a lot of questions for her, so Mom went to Fudgy's class, Fudge's class, and enjoyed it so much she offered to come to my class too. I told her, no thanks. I hadn't told anyone she was going to have a baby, except Jimmy Fargo. I tell him just about everything. And Sheila Tubman knew because she lives in our building, and she could see that Mom was pregnant. She's very old to be having a baby, isn't she? Sheila asked one afternoon. She's 34, I said. Sheila opened her mouth. Oh, she's really old. She's not as old as your mother, I said. I had no idea how old Sheila Tubman, Mrs. Tubman was, but Sheila's sister Libby was 13, so I guess that Mrs. Tubman was older than Mom. But you don't see my mother having a baby, do you? Sheila asked. No, but I couldn't think of anything else to say. I didn't understand what she was getting at anyway. When I went upstairs, I asked Mom, Is 34 too old to be having a baby? I don't think so, Mom said. Why? Just wondering. Grandma had Aunt Linda when she was 38. Oh, so my mother wasn't the oldest woman in the world to ha be having a baby. And Sheila didn't know what she was talking about, as usual. On February 26th, while my fifth grade class was on a trip to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, my sister was born. Later, I found out that she was born at exactly 2.04 in the afternoon, just as we were in the Egyptian room studying the mummies. They called her Tamara Roxanne, but for weeks, everybody just called her the baby. The baby is crying. The baby is hungry. Shh, the baby is sleeping. Soon, instead of calling her the baby, Mom started saying dumb things like, How's my little Tootsie Wootsie? And if the baby, as if the baby could answer her, Does my little Tootsie Wootsie need to be changed? Yes, almost always. Does my little Tootsie Wootsie need a feeding? Yes, almost always. And Mom's and Mom's little Tootsie Wootsie never slept more than two hours at a time. Every night, I'd wake up to her howls. Turtle, who slept at the foot of my bed, woke up too. And he'd howl along with her, a regular duet. By the time she was one month old, everybody was calling her Tootsie. Right away, I could see that there would be problems. I tried to warn my mother and father. When she goes to school with a name like that, the kids are going to tease her. They'll call her Tootsie Roll or worse. Mom and Dad just laughed. Oh, Peter, you're so funny. Only I wasn't being funny at all. I knew what I was talking about, but there was nothing I could do about it. I had a brother called Fudge, and now I had a sister called Tootsie. Maybe what my parents really wanted was a candy factory. I wondered how come I got off so easy. Tootsie was much smaller than I expected, but she was tough. I found that out when Fudge tried to pull off her toes. I just wanted to see what would happen, he explained when Tootsie screamed. You must never do that again, Mom told him. How would you like it if Peter tried to pull off your toes? I couldn't help laughing at that one. Peter knows my toes don't come off, Fudge said. Well, neither do Tootsie's. Mom said. One afternoon, when I came home from school, Tootsie wasn't in her crib. I figured Mom was feeding her, so I went to her bedroom to say hello. Mom was lying on her bed with her hands over her eyes. Hi, I said. Where's Tootsie? In her crib, asleep, Mom muttered. No, she's not. Of course she is. I just put her down a few minutes ago. I looked in her crib, and I'm telling you, she's not there. Mom took her hands away from her face. What are you saying, Peter? Mom, Tootsie's not in her crib. That's all I'm saying. Mom jumped up. Then where is she? We both ran down the hall into the area where we used to eat. Mom looked into the crib, but Tootsie wasn't there. Oh no, Mom cried. She's been kidnapped. Who'd want her? As soon as I said it, I was sorry. Call the police, Peter, Mom said. No, wait, call Dad first. No, no, call the police. Dial 911. 
Wait a minute, Mom, I said. Where's Fudge? Fudge? He's in his room, I guess. He was listening to records when I put Tootsie down for a nap. She looked thoughtful for a minute. You don't think. We raced down to the hall to Fudge's room. He was sitting on the floor, playing with his matchbox cars and listening to Puff the Magic Dragon on his record player. Where's Tootsie? Mom said. Tootsie? Fudge asked, sounding a lot like me when I'm trying to get out of answering a question. Yes, Tootsie, Mom said louder. She's hiding, Fudge said. What are you talking about? We're playing a game, Fudge told her. Who's playing a game? Mom asked. Us, Fudge said. Me and Tootsie. Tootsie can't play. She's too young for games. I help her, Fudge said. I help her hide. Fudge, Mom said, and I couldn't, I could tell that in another minute she'd really let him have it. Where is Tootsie? I can't tell you. She'll be mad. Just as my mother was about to explode, I had an idea. Let's play hot and cold, I said to Fudge. You follow me, and when I get close to Tootsie, you say hot. And when I get too far from her, you say cold. Get it? I like games, Fudge said. Okay, ready? Ready. Let's go. I walked down the hall to the living room. Cold, 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 Fudge sang. I went into the kitchen. Cold, cold, cold. I walked into the front hall. Hot. Oh, hot, Fudge cried. I opened the guest closet. Very hot. Watch out, you'll get burned. He jumped up and down, clapping his hands. Tootsie was on the floor of the closet, fast asleep in her infant seat. Mom scooped her up in her arms. Oh, thank goodness. My little Tootsie Wootsie is all right. Mom put her back into her crib, and then she really let go. That was very naughty thing to do, she shouted. I'm very angry at you, Fudge. But Tootsie likes to play. Have you hidden her before? Yeah. You must never do that again. Do you understand? No. You can't carry her around that way. She's not heavy. But babies have to be carried in a special way. You mean like mother cats carry their kittens? Fudge asked. That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mom told him. Fudge laughed. But you don't carry Tootsie in your mouth. No, I don't. But I do carry her very carefully to protect her. Do you love me, Mommy? Yes, very much. Then get rid of Tootsie, Fudge said. I'm sick of her. She's, she's no fun. Someday she'll be fun, and she'll be able to play hide-and-seek with you. But you have to wait. She's not ready yet. I don't want to wait. I want you to get rid of her now. Tootsie is our baby. I'm your baby. You're my little boy. No, I'm your baby. All right, Mom said. You're my baby, too. Then pick me up, like you do Tootsie. Mom opened her arms, and Fudge jumped up into them. He rested his head on Mom's shoulder, shoved his fingers into his mouth, and slurped on them. I know it's stupid, but just for a minute, I wished I could be Mom's baby again, too. After that, whenever we had company, Fudge tried to sell Tootsie. You like the baby? He asked. Oh, yes, she's adorable. You can have her for a quarter. When that didn't work, he tried to give her away. We have a baby upstairs. You can have her for free, he'd always ask. He'd always say to anyone on the street. When that didn't work, he tried to pay to have someone take her away. I'll give you a quarter if you take her to your house and never bring her back. He tried that with Sheila Tubman. My mother told me when I was born, Libby wanted to get rid of me too, Sheila said. Who could blame her, I thought. But she got over it, and so will you, she told Fudge. Fudge kicked Sheila and then ran down the hall. Sheila stood over Tootsie's crib. Lucky for her, she doesn't look like you, Peter. What's that supposed to mean, I said. Look in the mirror sometime. Goochie, goochie, goo, she said to Tootsie. We talk to her like she's a regular person, I said. But she's not a regular person, Sheila told me. She's a baby. So you don't have to make those stupid noises at her. But she likes them. Watch this. If I tickle her under her chin, she smiles. 
It just looks like she's smiling, but really, it's gas. Oh no, Tootsie is smiling, just for me, aren't you, you precious little thing? It didn't look like Tootsie was smiling, but why would anybody, anybody smile at Sheila Tubman, even a baby? That night, Fudge climbed into Tootsie's crib. I'm the baby, he said. Ga, ga, ga. Dad lifted him out of the crib. You're a big boy. You sleep in a big boy bed. No, I'm not a big boy. I'm a baby. Wah, wah, wah. I decided it was time to have a little talk with the kid. So I said, hey, Fudge, you want me to read you a story? Yes. Okay. Get, go get into bed and I'll be right there. I brushed my teeth and put on my pajamas. When I got to Fudge's room, he was sitting up in bed with his favorite book spread across his lap, Arthur the Anteater. Read, he said. I sat down next to him. Aren't you tired of acting like a baby? I asked him. No. I thought you wanted to be like me. I do. Well, you can't be a baby and be like me too. Why not? Uh, because babies can't do anything. They just eat and sleep and cry and aren't even interesting. Then why does everybody think Tootsie is so great? Because she's new. They'll get tired of her pretty soon. It's better to be older. Why? We get more privileges. What's privileges? It means you get to do things that she can't do. Like what? Like staying up late and um, watching TV and all sorts of things. I don't get to stay up late. You do. That's because I'm the biggest brother. But you'll get to stay up later than Tootsie. When? When she's four and you're eight. Then you'll get to stay up a lot later. And you'll go to school. And you'll know how to read and write. And she won't. And, uh, read, Fudge said sliding down in the covers. Will you stop trying to be a baby? I asked. I'll think about it. Well, that's better than nothing, I said. Fudge fell asleep before I finished the book. I pulled up his covers and turned out his light. Then I went into the bathroom and studied myself in the mirror. What was Sheila Tubman talking about? I looked the same as always. And why did she think Tootsie was lucky to not look like me? Unless it was my ears. Lately, they seemed too big. I tried holding them flat against the side of my head. Not bad, I thought. Maybe I could tape them back every morning before school. Yeah, but that would be a lot of trouble. If I grew my hair longer, I could... <clears throat> excuse me, I could hide them. Yes, that's what I'll do. Grow my hair until it covered my ears. I yawned. When I yawn while I'm look When I yawn while I'm looking in the mirror, I can see my tonsils. I went to my room, got into bed, and fell asleep. Who cares what Sheila Tubman thought anyway? All right, guys, that is the end of our story for tonight. And that was Super Fudge by Judy Bloom. And it was read with permission from Yearling Books, which is a part of Random House Books. So that was chapters one and two. Um, if you tune in tomorrow night. Oh, if you guys missed um, what I was talking about in the beginning of the video, um, back in April, we read Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. And you can find those readings on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Just search for the Meigs County um, District Public Library on YouTube and you'll find those too. And um, so that was kind of the beginning of Peter and Fudge and their story. So this kind of continues with it and the new baby that they added to the family. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and if you tune back in here on the library's Facebook page tomorrow night at 7 we will continue with our reading of Super Fudge. Okay? Alright guys it was so good to see you tonight and I hope you guys have a great evening and I'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Alright bye guys.